Hey everybody, welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. It is finally spring, that long winter is over and there are mushrooms starting to pop up outside. So on this channel, I like to take you into the forest to discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing out in your neck of the woods. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society here in Kitsap County, Washington. I like to go out into the woods to discover what kind of mushrooms are growing out here. Are they edible? Are they deadly? Are they hallucinogenic or medicinal? We cover all of that stuff here on Mushroom Wonderland. So make sure to hit subscribe and let's go see what kind of mushrooms are growing in April for spring of 2024 here on Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. So this is an area kind of on the edge of the forest and I see a lot of mushrooms growing here out of the bark. Um, here's some lar rather larger ones that are very cracked. And uh, you can see they have this really prominent annulus, this ring down here. They're gonna have a brown spore print, so they have these brownish colored gills. And uh, you know, they get this cracking when they start to dry out. Here's a nice cluster of them coming up, real young. And these guys are known as the Springfield Cap, or Agrosabe Praecox. So if you look right underneath here, uh, there's a partial veil that's protecting the gills, just like on an agaricus button mushroom. Uh, not the most beautiful color. It's sort of this dirty brown color goes to this, oh, you know, kind of a ochre, tan, orangish brown color. But there's a nice fruiting of them here. And so I recently just ate some of these. I had always heard that oh, the worms like that one. I had always heard that they taste like grass clippings or something. But um, so I had to try them for myself. And I'll tell you what, I thought they were actually. Here's a mushroom growing right down here on the ground. This is your common spring field cap, the A. grossby praecox. There's another one right there. This is an edible mushroom. I personally have never eaten them. I've heard they taste like grass clippings. And here's the young one. You can see that partial veil is not broken completely. So we're gonna take these and um, go cook them up and see what they taste like. All right, so right here is the two mushrooms. Very simply put just a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna throw a lid on there so the heat can really surround them and cook the mushrooms all the way through. They're smelling pretty good right now. Here, just a touch of kosher salt. Having a hard time getting them on the fork. I'm gonna take one more bite. This is the rest of them. I think they're delicious. I'm so glad that I tried them out. Delicious. They were really good. These are saprobic, free living. They don't need a tree to grow with. And uh, personally, I thought they were really good. You can see the spore deposit here. There's them brown spores. So this one's very mature. It dropped a million pajillion spores. That's a real number. But all along here, I could find a lot of egg rossiby, and I'm not gonna lie, I think they were really good, really good tasting. So anyways, this is a really common spring mushroom that you could definitely forage. Um, and I love it. Look at it, these all popping out of the ground like this. So one of the many uh, edible spring mushrooms that you can find growing right now. Look at this big fruiting of them along the sidewalk here. So no doubt, this is a huge area of wood chips. I could probably find just tons of these and uh, a good edible. So, A. Grossaby, Praycox Complex, the Springfield Cap. Here's a mushroom growing right in the trail off of this stick. And uh, there's an old one that's not looking so hot. But this guy, he got holding a lot of water. It's pretty magical. This one, wow, this one, uh, we don't see it. Whoa, Loki, easy. We don't see this one very often on the channel. Um, Pisapes badius, that one we see pretty commonly, but this one, Pisapes tubeformis, is a little different. A little more gray, doesn't have that indicative black stipe. Um, this one a lot creamier underneath. Uh, pretty common one, I've seen this one sequenced a lot of times and it came back as uh, the same thing, even like way different morphologies of it, so. Um, Loki's over here out in the woods with me and Gunner. He is barking at the bumblebees and stuff. It's hilarious. But anyways, piece of peas. Uh, uh, it's pretty tough. This one's not as tough as 
the uh, Battius. This one is a little more fleshy, but still considered inedible. And uh, but it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> the boys found this little marsh out here, having a good old time. Dude, you're getting me wet, but I just spotted this log. Look at this. Look at all those mushrooms growing there on that log. So I'm going to see if I can. I'm just wearing some like tennis shoes. But look at that. Oh, these are beautiful turkey tails. Look at these ones. Tremides versicolor. Very, very dark form. And I once heard Christopher Hobbs say that the darker they are, the more medicinal they are. Look at that creamy, poor surface underneath. Perfect. You guys, settle down, man. Jeez. But uh, Tremides versicolor, you know, it's characterized by concentric rings of different color. Um, you know, usually blues and grays and blacks and orange and brown. Um, these ones have a lot of this really dark color and they're very, very beautiful and fresh. And if we flip it over, one way you could tell the Tremides, I do this in a lot of videos, but I'm going to go super macro lens. And you can see, oh. Oh, those little tiny pores. That's how you could tell Tremides Versicolor. It's got concentric velvety rings on top. It has pores underneath and that white creamy uh, underneath pore surface. And then just beautiful, beautiful specimens right here. Easy to harvest, you know, and you could just take a couple handfuls of these and go simmer them for, you know, two hours, I've heard, to really break down all of the saccharide the polysaccharides and stuff and really to release um all the blue beta glucans and the and the medicinal properties so you know i'm not a medicinal mushroom guy some people prefer to call them beneficial that's fine but turkey tail is probably the most studied mushroom in the world for anti-cancer anti-inflammatory all kinds of good stuff so man yeah these are super dark form Really like these. Definitely gonna harvest some of these to take. Get out of here, you guys. <laughs> right here, I see a mushroom, a couple mushrooms growing. There's a couple more back here. And these are pretty common in the spring and in the autumn. Loki is just not helpful when it comes to video making. So here's a couple, here's a good example of sulfur tufts these are one of the more poisonous ones we have growing around here and this cap is a good uh, example of when the spores fell out of these gills they landed on top of this cap right they were kind of growing like this and this one shed its spores all over here so you can tell that it's got really dark purple ish type spores right kind of purplish brownish i don't know if the color is coming through that well but Got this yellowish kind of cap. These are sap robes. They're just eating the dead wood. They're not in association with any living tree. Um, and these glow up really bright in a UV light. Um, cause really bad gastrointestinal distress. People sometimes confuse them with honey mushrooms. They grow in big clusters at the base of stumps and old trees that are dead and sometimes just sticks like this. But really prolific spring fruiter. And uh, one that you want to avoid. Uh, they're very, very bitter. So, I mean, once you tasted one, you would be like, oh, yuck, that's disgusting anyways. But um, if you persisted on eating them, really bad GI upset, probably not death. I don't think there's any deaths associated. But they got these fluorescent-looking greenish-colored gills. Uh, hopefully that's coming through. And, um, you know, they're usually growing in groups. And uh, they just... Like it when the weather gets warmer, so there's a spring mushroom you need to be watching out for. Hyphaloma fasciculari, or the sulfur tuft, a poisonous mushroom growing right now in the spring. Growing right down here in the sunshine, we have a pretty orange looking mushroom. Looks very moist, a little bit viscid even, just gleaming in the sunshine. And these are beautiful lacaria, so probably in the lacaria lacata clade. And uh, these are an edible mushroom, although they don't taste very good. Um, and when you only find two of them like this, uh, you know, it's not worth even picking them to eat. I'm not even going to pick these just because I'm sure that they're in the genus Lacaria. Perhaps they're a different species. They could be Lacaria proxima. I think there's about a dozen different species of Lacaria. 
I'll put some pictures of those up on the screen right now. But uh, these ones, beautiful genus for photography and such. They have a kind of a scurfy stem on them. You know, the stipe has these little patches of flesh kind of hanging off. Widely spaced gills and a mild smelling, a little bit waxy feeling. But Lacaria, you could definitely eat them. I tried them out with high hopes that they would taste good, but unfortunately they did not taste good to me. But um, nonetheless, they're a survival food and they're pretty plentiful and they're just getting started right now this spring uh, in this forest kind of on the edge of a busy road. That's why you hear all the cars and stuff going by. But anyways, I'm happy to see Lacaria popping up. They typically like kind of warmer weather, so that's a sign spring has sprung. So, very cool. Let's keep moving. Spot a mushroom right here on the side of the trail. Looks like it's been mildly fondled already by somebody. But this is a very kind of a plain looking mushroom. Right? Just nothing very outstanding about it whatsoever. There's no ring zone or annulus. I was kind of looking for that or like some tattered remnants hanging on the edge of the cap right here would signify a grossaby. And this one could still be an agrosaby, one that I'm not really familiar with, but the Springfield cap, agrosaby praecox complex, really common in the spring, typically will have some sort of an annulus or a ring zone. There's going to be evidence of a partial veil and dangly, um, you know, appendiculate material hanging from the edge of the margin here. This one doesn't show any signs of that. And just due to its plain boringness, I think this is a hebaloma. So I'm not really versed on that genus. They're really kind of an advanced ID. They're, they're unique in their boringness. I mean, it is just like the most boring looking mushroom. Brown spore, medium brown spore, which is another just really bland characteristic, you know, um, and just nothing really outstanding about this mushroom. But pretty sure this one is in the genus Hebaloma. So I'm going to upload it to iNaturalist and leave it behind. Unknown edibility. Probably leave this one behind. It's one of these gilled mushrooms that, you know, you just, uh, you know, some of them can be really tough to identify. So, here you go. All right, these ones keep showing up. These are huge ones. Look at that, showing up in a lot of the videos. These ones are known as the Alpine Jelly Cone, Gwipiniopsis alpina. These grow in the winter and spring in Washington State. These ones are huge, and they're just an orange jelly. So you can just eat these straight off the lawn. Let's see, I got it. They call them poor man gumdrops. If you've ever been going through the forest and you come across some wood that looks like this, it's this blue-green color. This is caused by a fungus known as Chlorocyboria aragonazans. This is a, um, a wood decayer, and it actually just turns this blue, this wood bluish green like this, and you can make trinkets and crafts and stuff. People have been doing that for a long time, especially in like Italy. There's modern-day people who do it. It's pretty neat. I recently heard about somebody who actually was like inoculating wood to purposely have it turn blue-green like this. The common name is blue-green elf cup, and so the fungus um, gets in the wood, turns it bluish-green colored like that um, on these old, old decayed sticks. And over here I'm seeing a much bigger piece of it. Look at this. This whole, whole chunk is the Chlorociborea. So that is really cool. And you can forage this if you're a woodworker. Um, or you like doing crafts and stuff. That's a big chunk and it's like still very intact. Sometimes it'll be so rotten that you can't do much with it. Um, it's somewhat rare to find the fruiting bodies, but I find them about half the time. It's a little tiny bluish green cup that grows off of the wood, usually on the underside, if you can get to the underside. This one really heavy and stuck there in the, in the ground, but that's a nice chunk of Chlorociborea. Could definitely gather that and uh, make some wood trinkets and stuff out of it there's more of it all over it's actually pretty common <laughs> and you really see it show up this time of the year um, so right here is a good area to get a bunch of this 
this wood if I wanted to. Oh, look at that. There is a little fruiting body. See that? There's your blue-green elf cup. Come on. There it is. The elusive blue-green elf cup. They're, those are extra small, but they don't get really big at all. Maybe the size of a, a dime, maybe, on a really, really good day. So, anyway, it's always kind of cool to come across wood that's discolored like that due to a fungi. Notice growing right here on the side of the trail, and then a little bit farther over, we have a nice patch of these. These brown mushrooms with the little white spots on the cap. These ones are a spring mushroom that grows around here. Looks like the Mario mushroom, but brown instead of red, right? So, same genre. This one, Amanita. This one, the Amanita pantheranoides, or panther-like mushroom. And this one containing the same chemicals that you'd find in Amanita muscaria. So, containing iobotanic acid and muscamol. Creates a deliriant type effect. Um, they're also neurotoxins, so... You can get pretty sick from these as well. So best to be avoided. But these are a spring amanita that are mycorrhizal with the trees here. And so these uh, Douglas fir trees here, great mycorrhizal associates for mushrooms like our amanitas in the northwest. And here's a nice little grouping of them. They're really starting to pop up now that it's warming up. But they can tolerate some pretty cold weather. So amanita pantheranoides, this one toxic. And I would just leave it behind. Looked like an egg or something growing right here on the side of the trail. This one has those indicative warty, bumpy white surface of an ammonita or an amanita. Uh, so this one looks like a golf ball laying here in the moss, but this is a, our spring amanita that we have growing around here in Washington, western Washington anyways. This one, amanita aprica, and it's a beautiful orange color, but when it's young, it, uh, it just looks white like this, kind of bumpy and white. So it could look like a calvadia or some kind of a puff ball. So be aware when you're harvesting your puff balls or mushrooms that you're not picking amanitas. Wow, how cool, check this out. This beautiful apricot colored mushroom growing here on the side of the trail. This one is commonly called our sunshine amanita or the apricot amanita. Look at that, amanita aprica. So this one comes out in the spring. You can see that universal veil remnants, all those little white spots that you see on the Mario mushroom. This one's pretty close relative. And um, these ones are a little more infused into the cap, but this one containing some toxins, should definitely be considered toxic. Contains iobotanic acid, muscamol. Um, these can create a deliriant effect, but they can also make you or your pets quite sick or your kids. And it actually has kind of a tempting looking color, but these grow in association with conifer trees. So usually you find these deep in the woods in the, uh, in the spring. They have this white gills with a white spore print. And this beautiful skirt hanging down on the stem and these are beautiful. So the apricot amanita or the sunshine amanita, amanita aprica. I'm gonna put this one just kind of back where it went. Give it a couple of love taps and keep on going down the trail. There's some mushrooms growing right here alongside the trail. These ones uh, commonly referred to as LBMs or little brown mushrooms. And these ones, wow, look at that bright orange color. This could be a, a type of Cortinarius or perhaps Inosibi, one of the fiber caps. And I see that fibrous cap there. So I really think this is Inosiboid, which um, a lot of the Inosibi mushrooms contain muscarin, so they're poisonous and should be avoided. So I would avoid this, but man, looking at that color, I'm really thinking we got a type of Cortinarius here, a very small Cortinarius. That is cool and it's very fibrous. And, uh, you know, these little brown mushrooms that are gilled like this, um, usually good to leave alone. Man, the top, I'm saying Inos would be the bottom. I'm looking at Cortinarius, bright orange spores. Those would typically be in the Cortinariaceae, a mycorrhizal mushroom. And so are, so are Inos would be. So growing with the trees or the plants here, 
these um, I would definitely avoid eating these anything that's uh, got gills and orangish spores like that probably good to avoid um, could be a could be a you know a type of uh, muscarin containing mushroom so anyways LBMs probably more advanced ID uh, capabilities required to be eating little brown mushrooms so usually just leave these ones behind but interesting to study if you're a mushroom dork so by the time I will have edited this I will have figured out what this mushroom is I'll put it up there on the screen this one very fibrous cap very orange gills no annulus but a slight ring zone I see that so could be in the web caps let's let's check out one of these little ones this is how we really really tell no this one is definitely in the inasa baseae i'm gonna leave this one behind not typically good foraging types of mushrooms if you see little brown mushrooms there's thousands of different types and uh, most of them aren't good for eating So right down here is a pretty common spring mushroom. These grow all over the world. And this is what you would call a false morel. Uh, false morels, typically talking about the genus Gyromitra. So that's what this is. Gyromitra esculenta or something close to that. These contain monomethyl hydrazines. These um, have something called gyromitrin, which turns into this monomethyl hydrazine when you eat it. And that's the same stuff they use to fuel rockets. It's, uh, it's actually a quite a dangerous toxin. And um, once you cook them, uh, that gyromitrin will break down pretty readily. But um, if you were to eat this raw, you could get very, very sick. Um, it can cause convulsions and fainting and seizures and all kinds of just crazy neurological disorders and whatnot. So um, gyromitra esculenta, this one, um, some people call it the brain. You can see why. Brain mushrooms, we call it that. And this one's a beautiful example, but this thing, quite toxic. So leave it alone. You know, there's some people who detoxify these by boiling them a couple of times. And then you could cook it just like any other mushroom. And yeah, you can get away with that. But um, there is a lot of reported poisonings from these mushrooms. So if you see these, you know, um, they are an ascomite. So they look a lot like a morel in the way that they grow and just like how they're dry and they produce spores the same way, but this is definitely different than a morel. So this one, your false morel, Gyromitra esculenta. Or if you see it written Gyromitra CF esculenta, that means like confer with, like start there. You know, it's probably a different species. The real Gyromitra esculenta described from Europe. This one, Western North America, undoubtedly genetically a little bit different, but probably containing the same toxins and should be treated the same. So avoid this one. I'm gonna put it back down, and uh, but it's a good sign of spring. All right, this is kind of exciting. This is something I've been looking for. So I came to a spot where I know they, they often come up. Right here we see a little baby morel. You see that? A little natural morel. So this one, probably Morchella norvegiensis something close to that you can see how young and blonde it is this one's the conifer loving morel so we have these beautiful blonde morels that grow deep here in the conifer douglas fir hemlock forest and uh, they're just getting started so we're at the very beginning of april spotted this one so isn't it beautiful look at that nice little morel the thing is so fresh so when it's this young i'm gonna leave it behind even though i do have a theory and it's right more than half the time that once you make eye contact with a mushroom it's going to stop growing so i'll test this theory again but this has happened a lot of times where i spot a mushroom like this i'm gonna leave it i'll come back in a few days and that thing won't have grown at all it'll just be dead and uh <laughs> i know i mean i cultivate mushrooms too so I, I know that's not totally true but wild mushrooms are a little different man you get your eyes on it it's liable to stop growing so me and Gunner are gonna head on down the trail. Hey, what's that? What's that right back there? What's that right back there? Look at this. There she is, your woodland morel. Beautiful, 
Morcella norvegensis growing just right on the side of the trail. So, you know, this is kind of one of my spots, my secret spots. But these little buggers will give themselves away. They kind of pop up in different areas every year, but in the same vicinity. And so no doubt, they're probably all back in here in the, in the brush, but it is so thick here in Western Washington. I mean, some areas of the forest are just like impenetrable. So I can only imagine there's a lot of morels growing back in there and they're just getting started. And this little guy would be a wonderful little addition to an omelet or something. Um, it's a little bit on the young side, but if I don't get it, somebody's going to, you know what I mean? So no pick shaming here on this channel, but a beautiful example. Very young. I'm going to take some gorgeous photos of this guy. Definitely deserves it. So happy to see spring morels popping out, you know, in the east, uh, North America, y'all have them growing underneath ash and cottonwood and stuff. Here we also have cottonwood associating morels, but we also have these conifer morels they're they're much more rare and uh they grow uh much fewer you know there's not huge clusters of these ones but they are uh superior in my mind <laughs> probably it's just because they're so rare and but you know sometimes you can get a handful of them um and have yourself an amazing little supper so marcella norvengensis happy to see that in the woods today Let's see what we got growing right here. This one looks a little different. Oh wow, look how dark the spores are there. This one, uh, dark purple brown spore print. You can see all the spores that have collected right there on the upper stem, right above this ring. And this one looks a lot like Psilocybe cubensis. It looks like a magic mushroom, but this one is Tropharia ambigua. And uh, actually, Psilocybe used to be in the genus Tropharia, so. They share the same spore color, but these ones don't have any psychoactive properties. Pretty benign mushroom, most of the literature says, unknown edibility, but if it were really toxic, we would definitely know that. So I think it's probably edible, but I've never tried it. Um, and it can look very kind of boring, but it has all these tattered little bits that hang off the edge of the cap right there. That's called an appendiculate margin. Right here, the partial veil covered in those purple brown spores and uh you can see how dark the gills are the gills aren't actually that dark it's just the spores that have came in so this one has just millions and billions of spores in there microscopic tiny little cellular structures that are the reproductive organ of the uh, or cell of the of the fungi itself so stropharia ambigua spring mushroom well, this one growing alone, but often you can find quite a few of them. And if you ever eat that one, please put it in the comments. Let me know uh, what you thought, if it was tasty, if you got sick, whatever. <laughs> the ambiguous Stropharia. Beautiful. See a mushroom growing right down here. See that kind of reddish color on the stipe there? This one, I'm sure, is in the Cortinariaceae, uh, some kind of a Cortinarius, which is cool because don't see many mycorrhizal mushrooms coming out in the spring, but some Cortinarius do. Cortinarius, a large genus of mushrooms that um, a lot of them are poisonous. Not many of them are collected for food, but um, this one, uh, in the you know the genus Cortinarius is commonly called the web caps. Let's see. Well, you can definitely see that reddish, uh, I mean, orange color in the gills right there. And it's kind of old, so you don't see this webbing, this cortina. So it's got like a cobwebby veil that hides the gills when it's young. And then it matures and it grows into this. And so that orange colored gill, orange colored spore print, uh, it lands right here on the stem. And you can see that orange color. And a lot of these have kind of violet tinges and stuff. They can be very beautiful. Um, and the violet court itself, uh, Cortinarius violaceus, an edible mushroom, it's not too terrible. That, uh, best to just leave alone. Some of these are actually deadly, so, um, they contain something called orlanine or, or something to that effect that, uh, it's kind of an unknown toxin that will just liquefy your kidneys and stuff, so, nasty stuff. 
you don't want that but see that color of the gills there you go there's your cortinarius mycorrhizal mushrooms in the spring so so are the amanitas they grow in association with these trees and the and the morcella the the morels that i found so a few different uh mycorrhizal spring mushrooms are you ready to go boy So check this out, another nice flush of Trimedes Versicolor, but this one much, much lighter colored. And so sometimes you might think, oh, this is a different species of turkey tail, but you know, sometimes they get sequenced out and they are the exact same thing. They just really have various colors. So this is a really nice fruiting. Again, you can pick these and dry them for later. I've actually picked this patch. Look, they're growing on the snag right over there. They're growing all over all this stuff right here. So a great turkey tail patch, um, and it keeps producing. It's just eating what's inside of this log. There's a white rot decayer, so it's just eating all that lignin, leaving behind all the cellulose, all the white. And these are beautiful, and you can see that pore surface under there. But um, yeah, lots and lots of turkey tail growing right now in spring. So get out there if you want to make some homemade medicine you know you could just simmer these for about two hours just nice and low and slow throw some lemon zest in there a little honey and just sip it and um you know report back here in the comments tell us how you're feeling after a few days of doing that dude this totally sucks i came to this spot where every year an agaricus augustus grows and here it is your Agaricus Augustus. A lot of yellowing going on here, but this thing got destroyed. It's like somebody came over and picked it. Probably wondering what it was. I've been watching this one for a few days, waiting for it to get to full size. And I come down to find this, but look at the base of this thing. Yeah, this thing's just stringing apart, but this one's one of my favorite edibles, but uh, yeah, this one's toast. That sucks. So Agaricus Augustus, I'm actually gonna collect this and try to get some spores off of it. Um, but uh, Agaricus Augustus, also known as the Prince, a really, really good mushroom. These ones look like they have pretty much aborted little baby Agaricus Augustus. But this is one of the edible Agaricuses that grow wild here in Washington, the Pacific Northwest, um, related to the grocery store button mushroom. But this one, much more flavorful, very almond-like uh, flavor and scent. And it's beautiful. It's too bad we didn't find a better specimen, but it's a good sign that, that uh, you know, spring mushrooms are here. So uh, this one's stained yellow quite badly. That's usually just due to damage. But um, yeah, it smells amazing. And so I'm gonna keep checking this spot because it produces um, a bunch of Prince mushrooms, but be aware if you're in city settings that there could be chemicals and also people walk their dogs who pee on mushrooms and plants and things like that so you know be conscious of that and these definitely can grow in urban settings the agaricus augustus or the prince do you remember what these mushrooms are called uh princess the princes you're right good job and you could tell they're the prince because they're brown and they have all those little spots on them and they have slugs on them sometimes. Look at them. Are they so cute? Is them so cute? Yeah. Hey, you guys. So thanks for joining me on that episode. Make sure to jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com. Get some merch. Uh, you can hit me up on Patreon, Instagram, TikTok. I'm all over the place. So thanks for joining this episode. And we'll make sure to see you on the next one here on Mushroom Wonderland. Much love, everyone. Peace out.